welcome to the plan. If you're a long time viewer and you want to know where this channel is headed, then I recommend you watch this video to the very end. I've broken this video down into three sections. So what did I do? Why did I do what I did? And what's next? So this summer I started making TikTok style edits. Short style, TikTok style, same thing to me. It's all complete slop. You're already wondering, okay, but why did I do it? Just be patient, I'll get there. And as well as making these shorts, so I'll put one on the screen so you know how they looked like. I mean, they all look different from each other, but they did follow a very similar structure. So you've got, you know, this TikTok style color grading, very flashy captions with, well, repetitive effects and transitions like zooms and shakes. I've already actually spoken about this in my previous video, so I do recommend checking that out if you want to know more. Along with these edits, I also started producing more tutorials around that style. So you can see I covered halftone shakes, smooth slide transitions, even the coloring. Okay, so what was the actual problem? Well, I kept switching back and forth from something related to TikTok style edits, then something completely different, something unique, perhaps like how to create, how to make a CRT effect on Premiere Pro, how to get perfect Twixter in five minutes. This is something that TikTok editors don't really care about because I mean, that's why they're TikTok editors in the first place. They just want results fast. So this does not appeal to them. On the other hand, you've got Aura Glow effect on Premiere Pro, which people have been asking for for a very long time. I don't want to say that I was forced to make tutorials around stuff like this, uh, even things like how to make TikTok style coloring. I don't have to, right? But the issue is no one's done it before. So it was either get this done with, get just make as many tutorials as possible. Then I can move on to, well, anything. So I could go back to making, uh, where are they? Jug style tutorials, maybe even advanced manga animation. But the issue was these videos weren't really profitable. Let me actually show you something which, you know, I wasn't meant to show until later on, but this is uh, my revenue, which you can't actually see because some of you might think, wow, that's actually quite a lot. It's not because it differs from country to country. So April, May and June is when I was making videos, long form content, these tutorials here. So that's the revenue uh, generated from these videos. July is when I started making shorts. So this here was the first phase. Uh, and it kind of slowed down during August, September, I went all out. Do you see the difference between making long form content? So the tutorials that I just showed you and making shorts. I mean, that's insane, is it not? So what this meant was that making long form content wasn't a good idea. If I wanted to make income for the long term, these videos were making little to no money. I could just pick one. Let's go for how to make Twitch shakes on Premiere Pro. I think that performed pretty well. Let's take a look at the revenue. Would you look at that? £2.33 only. That's about $3, I think, for my Americans out there. Let's pick another video. Let's go for uh, how to make a CRT effect. I expect this one to have higher revenue. Let's see. Yeah, £6.49. I mean, it's better than the other video, but still. For 10,000 views, that's nothing. Let's head to revenue and look at the RPM, 64 pence, which is about 80 cent. So you can see it's not very good if you want to make money. Unfortunately, the biggest reason why was because of viewer location. If you're aware of how revenue works on YouTube, RPM, stuff like that, then just by looking at this image here, you already get the idea that my revenue is pretty low and also retention, which is terrible. I think it dipped down to about 4% towards the end here. That's for a nine minute video. So of course it would have mid roll ads, but still it would only make like two pounds total. So yes, I was not having a very good time making these tutorials, regardless of what it was. It could be TikTok or something else. And that's why I always release paid preset packs. So Enga's premium preset pack. Did you see how many times I promoted in every single video? That's because these videos don't make money in the first place. So I need something to kind of make up for the time lost because time is money. Okay, so I've actually gone off, uh, not script, but like the structure of my video, I've kind of messed it up. I was supposed to explain this later. Um, I've kind of explained the why already. I will get back to revenue in just a second because believe it or not, uh, I did not make shorts for revenue. 
That was not the main reason. I did not expect uh, Shorts to make this much money. The main goal was subscribers. That's what I wanted. I wanted a boost. I made these shorts, which, you know, were very clearly successful. Look at this one. 9.6 million views, 18,000 subscribers, and a pretty decent amount of money, which I did not expect at all. I was after subscribers, and it, it's been a success. I think over the summer, so uh, I think from July, August, September, I gained 75,000 subscribers. My goal is obviously 100,000, but I want to reach it by the end of this year. So making these shorts has given me a boost because these tutorials, they're not really helping at all. In fact, let's take a look at how many subscribers I get from these videos. So let's just go for like reverse time remap. Let's go for, let's just open a bunch of these up. Why not? So this one made 30. So it got me 31 subs. I mean, sure. Let's actually take a look at the audience. So yeah, half of them not subscribed. This one, 13, 17, 7. It's not very rewarding, as you can very clearly tell. Oh, and by the way, these shorts, they're gone. I've deleted them because I'm done with them, which should be obvious anyway. That's the point of this video. I'm talking about how I'm moving on. They served their purpose. It was all for growth and it worked. Now it's time to explain the why, which I don't really get because I've sort of explained most of it. But we need to go back in time, back when I first started this channel. This was in 20, well, I mean, I started this in 2020, I think, but I started uploading tutorials in 2021. Can you believe that? As in, can you believe I've, I've been making these videos for four years and I've barely covered AMV editing or just editing edits in general for Premiere Pro? When I started making these tutorials, I was 16 and right now I'm 20. It was basically a small hobby back then that made me a little bit of cash. Actually, I don't think I got monetized until like a year or two later. It took a very long time. But compared to now, which, uh, you know, I sort of do full time. Well, not exactly because my upload schedule is so inconsistent. However, the reason why I started was to prove that Premiere Pro is capable of making, well, not of making edits, but that it can be used to create good edits. As I said, I don't think I've proven my point yet. I've only covered the very basics. So I want to finally move on from TikTok style edits. No more. I don't care if it's trending. I don't care if something's popular with a few exceptions. Maybe if it's like really popular and everyone's making it and it actually looks good, maybe I will make a tutorial. Otherwise, for things like character cutout transition, you don't need a tutorial for that. Just learn how to mask and learn it yourself. So point one, I still need to prove. Number two, make stable income creating evergreen content. So what is evergreen content? It's things like these, how to tie a tie. This never really expires. This was uploaded 10 years ago and it's got 81 million views. People search for this every single day. Someone who just started a new job and they've never tied a tie before, they'll find this, they'll search for this video, they'll watch it. No matter how much time passes, so it could be five years, it could be 10 years, this video will still be relevant. And it's sort of the same with this video here as an example, how to make a smooth TikTok edit. It won't be relevant for long, I don't think. It really does depend on what's trending. It depends on TikTok itself. I did hear about the platform being sold. I don't really get the, th the whole thing, but yeah, tutorials, especially how-to videos, will, uh, well, they're not always evergreen, but they usually will be. This one up here is the best example. This one, not so much. It really does depend on the topic. So did I make stable income creating evergreen content? Yes, but it's clearly not enough. So number one, I want to prove that Premiere Pro is in fact capable and you can use it to make good edits. Number two, I want to make more tutorials, sell less packs. Hopefully I can make things free in the future as in not existing packs and things I've sold in the past, that's gonna remain paid but uh, I do want to uh, release things for free on certain tutorials. So if it's something really complicated, something that requires both Premiere Pro and After Effects to make, then of course I'd probably release the project file. In rare circumstances, because I'd rather you watch the whole video and actually learn something, but if I do, then I mean, I'd have no reason to charge you for it, so it would be free. And the reason why would be because the videos will make a decent amount of money, so there's no point in charging for assets. Oh, and I just remembered two very important points. 
I was about to end the video right here. So as you know, these shorts were very successful. They generated a lot of revenue. What I'm going to be doing is making a separate channel and continue making this because it would be very stupid of me to just give up. I don't know how I forgot about this because it was the main point around uh, income. These shorts here, these edits, whatever they're called, they are going to be funding my long form videos because I don't know how long it's going to take for them to finally make a decent amount of money. So yeah, that's going to be the plan. I'm going to move on from uh, making or producing edits like this on this channel. Same goes for tutorials, of course. But what they're going to do is fund my main channel. This one, the name's Anger, which I think is a very good idea. So these fund my channel and then I produce the good stuff. As you already know, which I explained, uh, videos don't make enough money. That's why I've got things like affiliate links. Uh, memberships and even uh, my shop where I sell project files and presets but also things that are behind like a membership members only content so I do want to continue doing that but to a certain extent I don't want to charge for everything so hopefully that will change and finally number three to get the silver play button this has taken way too long but I'm finally almost there I'm just really tired now I want to hit 100,000 I want to make content every now and again, as in good content for good edits, no more TikTok slop. And that's it. That's all I'm hoping for. These three things by the end of this year. Moving forward, these are the things I'm going to be doing from now on. So I am indeed going to be making both After Effects and Premiere Pro tutorials. That does not mean I'm going to stop making Premiere tutorials. That's why I specialize in, so that would be really stupid of me. I think utilizing both After Effects and Premiere Pro can help you make the best edits. Use Premiere for the editing, so for the actual editing, which means cutting clips, resizing, color grading, adding text, all that stuff. That's what Premiere Pro is for. And then After Effects for, well, the obvious, which is visual effects. Effects that Premiere Pro doesn't include or can't handle. So really, it stays optional with Premiere Pro remaining the dominant tool to make the edits. Okay, so that's the first point. I've already kind of mentioned this point, but assets will become free. Eventually. I say will become free, but I'm referring to future assets. I mean, I might make uh, older packs free. I don't know. I don't have any plans at the moment. Maybe in two years. We'll see. Anyways, hybrid, if I can spell, editors. What on earth is a hybrid editors? It's a new editing group. This is not an official announcement or anything, but I may be starting an editing group very soon. And this will be for both Premiere Pro and After Effects editors, which is why it's called hybrid editors, because hybrid means like a bit of both, I think. And the very last thing I want to say is, Hopefully, I'm going to start posting more on my second channel, Ike Ninten. Can you believe I made this channel last year and I've only made, I've only posted two videos. I just haven't really had time because I want to make content that I'm very passionate about, which means I need to dedicate a lot of my free time towards it. Hopefully, once I hit 100,000 subs, that will change and I'll be posting more. So feel free to subscribe if you're into Nintendo, Persona or even indie games. We'll see how this channel goes. I don't really have an outro, so take a look at what I did recently whilst playing Tears of the Kingdom again.